one is we can all be in an attitude of prayer. Good morning. God is good. And all the time. Amen. Uh, we can all just be in an attitude of prayer. Dear most gracious and loving Father, we come to you right now giving you glory, honor, thanks, and praise. Father God, we thank you so much for allowing us the opportunity to gather here today to fellowship and to just give you the praise. Father God, we thank you for this day. Father God, we thank you for, for, for our, our pastor. Father God, we thank you for just being able to be in church because we know there are a lot of churches that still aren't open. Father God, we just ask that everyone who is present today and everyone who's watching on Zoom, that they receive something from the message today, Father God. I spoke earlier about this being the season of shift, Father God, since, since this is Lent, and I just pray that everybody just grows closer to you and higher in you, Father God, and that there is a shift in everyone's life, um, Father God. And we just pray that um, everyone who's still traveling to church, that they get here safely. And Father God, we pray for those who are unable to make it today, Father God. We pray for our pastor that the word that she delivers, that somebody is delivered by that word, Father God. And, and we just pray that we don't leave here the same. We ask these things in your son Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Thank you. Let us begin um, with our College Hill Community Church announcements. Today is March 13th, 2022. Um, College Hill Bible Study is every Thursday evening from 6 p.m. to 7. Uh, we're beginning with a theme in a Lenten Bible study of the book of Revelation. Pastor Worthen teaches the word and, it, and its lessons in relevant ways and leads fruitful discussion amongst the group. Come and join us. We are learning and we have a really good time in Bible study. Also, um, if you're interested in uh, the website, uh, Sister Kathy Lakes is a person to contact, uh, and she can use some assistance and some volunteers. Also, it's a great, <coughs> excuse me, a great learning opportunity. The church needs van drivers to assist as we start our van, as we begin our van ministry and getting people back to church that don't drive. So, if you're able to assist with that charge, uh, contact Sister Paula Ewers. The presbyter of the Miami Valley Spring Spring Youth Retreat will be held. April 3rd, April 1st through the 3rd at Kirkmont Center in Zanesfield and open to youth grades 7 through 12. And adult leaders also. The cost for the retreat is $75 per person. And um, if you've not been to Kirkmont, it's a really great place uh, to spend time and to learn and to be with nature. As you enter the church, uh, you notice that in the parking lot we have a wooden house, this, a wooden shaped house. It has books in it. And uh, the books are for students, uh, for children just to read and adults also. Our Darling Bookshire restocks the library um, with church newsletter, our daily bread magazines, and the upper room magazines, free for your taking. And also, if you have books that you want to donate, um, we, will, we'll, we can accept the books because we want to encourage reading for our, for our students our, and for our adults. Reading is fundamental. We already know that. Okay, so World Day of Prayer was on March 4th. Dr. Carolyn Peters began our vigil at 5 a.m., and we continued for over 12 hours. We thank the following College Hill members for signing up for our vigil. Jan Breck, Paula Drake, Gay Guerin, Diane Harris, Stan Hurdle, Larry Jenkins, Mac and Kathy Lakes, Krista Lewis, Carolyn Peters, Ethel Smith, Lee and Pat Townsville. Thank you so much. Please be aware, um, in the church, the tap water We've not been to church very much, so the water is not, is not good. So we ask, we ask that you don't drink the water. We have water downstairs if you need water. Uh, and um, that we just uh, know that the pipes need to be kind of cleaned out. So we want to just maintain safety. The Office of the Presbyterian Youth Trianum has been, uh, has been um, canceled this year um, due to COVID concerns. I think those are the announcements for, for today. I want to thank everyone for being here this morning and let us begin our service. Welcome to the joyful, we rejoice with you. Welcome to the tired and weary, come and take rest. Welcome to the lonely and left out. May you find community among us. Good morning to everyone. 
Sean bienvenidos todos los que están gozosos, nos regocijamos con ustedes. Sean bienvenidos todos los que están cansados, vengan y descansen en Dios. Sean bienvenidos todos los que se sienten solitarios y abandonados, que sientan acom acompañados y como parte de una comunidad entre nosotros. Welcome to the foreigner, to the stranger, to the refugee. Make you find safety here. Welcome to every nation, every race, every orientation, every identity. May you find hospitality here. For the God who delights in all of creation is in our midst. Sean bienvenidos los extranjeros, los refugiados, que encuentren seguridad aquí en este lugar. Sean bienvenidos todos los que llegan de cualquier nación, raza, orientación e identidad. Que puedan sentir nuestra hospitalidad. Porque el Dios que se deleita en toda su creación está entre nosotros. College Hill is a multicultural family of faith, which welcomes diversity in our worship, in our ministry, and all the world. We hope you find something in our prayer and praise, in our music or ministry, that makes you feel a part of our family, and most of all, of God's family. All are welcome here at College Hill. College Hill is a family multicultural de fe that accoge la diversidad in nuestra adoración, in nuestro ministerio, y in todo el mundo. Esperamos que encuentren algo in en nuestras oraciones y alabanzas en nuestra música o ministerio que los haga sentir parte de nuestra familia, sobre todo de la familia de Dios. Todos sean bienvenidos y bienvenidas. Praise the Lord, somebody. Oh, come on now. Praise the Lord, somebody. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I just have to share with you this morning the best laid plans. <laughs> I was happy to be done with virtually everything that I had to do. Usually I um, hit up uh, poor sister Jessica and A.B. with some additional worship slides and things somewhere around midnight, 5 a.m., something like that. I finished it early. Thank you. I finished it early on Saturday. Somebody say early. early. I kicked back and relaxed last night. Even with that loss of an hour, I was still doing all right. Got up in plenty of time. Get almost halfway to the, uh, here to the church, and I get a text from Sister, Sister Jessica. You all don't text and drive, amen. But nonetheless, I got a text from Sister Jessica. You all call me in the morning. <laughs> um, that the slides were not included with what she sent. So I turned around. I thought I had enough time to turn around. I got almost home and realized, okay, I'm gonna be late if I go all the way back. So I'm gonna have to just go and she's gonna have to take care of the slides herself, which I did, I praise God for her. But as soon as I turned around, my gas light came on. You know, I've been avoiding the gas stations trying to find the cheapest one I could get, right? I tr I'm, a, I'm a Kroger's, I can use my Kroger points, so I wanted to wait till I could get to Kroger's. But I had to go to BP for $4.07, and I just, you know what? Before, before I began to start cussing and fussing to myself in the car, I praise the Lord that I could pull out my, car, my debit card and pay for enough gas to put into my car to get where I need to go and then be here today. So see, the enemy gets busy in the morning trying to mess with our, our minds and our peace. And so right now, I wanna, um, is Sister Dominique present? I thought I just saw her. Sister Dominique, can you hear me? Did she give, you, did she give anybody the index cards? All right, all right, that's what we needed. If, um, I'm gonna ask if the ushers would pass out those index cards right now. They didn't realize that I wanted them to get to you when you were coming in, but you wouldn't have known what to do with them anyway. If you need a pen, please let us know. What I want you to do um, right now, if you can, or during praise and worship, once nobody's talking, um, I want you to write down how you're feeling. I want you to write down anything that might be bothering you when you came in, any problems you were having, whether it's 
um, problems, you know, health-wise or in the family or on your job or whatever it is, how you're feeling, any problems you brought in with you, if you'll just write that down and then set it aside until later. But just write down what kind of mood you're in, how you're feeling, so, and some things that have been bothering you. Amen? All right, so with that, there's a few other things that I want to bring up. Um, uh, the passing of the peace, we want to welcome people, but before we do that, we want to be sure that we recognize any visitors that are present, any visitors that are present. Brother Larry Holler has the mic. We would like to recognize you if there are any. All right. Oh, wait a minute. We got a hand up here, Brother Larry. This young gentleman right here. If you guys can pray for my grandma, she has cancer. What's your grandmother's name? Um, Angel. Oh, beautiful name. All right, we will lift her up during our prayer request. Amen. Anyone else to be recognized? Okay, with that, we don't just say hello, how you doing, and, you know, walk away. We want to give you a blessing when we greet you. Let people know that you're happy to see them. So right now, in English, we say the peace of Christ be with you. In Spanish, says, La paz de Cristo esté contigo. You all say, La paz de Cristo esté contigo. Amen. Wave to somebody, blow them a kiss, you know, Jesus forever, air hugs, wave at the cameras. And by the way, people online, forgive me, I get caught up here in the sanctuary when we're doing these exercises and I talk to the people that are here and I forget to talk to the people that are there. So if you have, always come with pen and paper. That's a good thing, right? If you're not coming to church to learn something, something's wrong. So always, if you're at home, run and get some paper. Write down how you're feeling right now, anything that might be on your heart or mind that you've been um, worried about. And um, we just want to make sure that we're including you all. You, you all tip me off and say, hey, don't forget to tell them when I'm talking and not including everyone. With that... As we have, as we have uh, greeted one another and recognized visitors, we have two new members to recognize. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen, amen. We've had several people join over the last year, um, and we've been trying to get, to get everybody together for a new members class, and finally I realized that's not going to be possible. We get who we can get when we get them. So the two that have made, next made it through new members class are... Welcome to Robert Leve Level. Where is Brother Bobby? Lavelle? Level? Leville. Lenville Taylor. Amen. AKA Brother Bobby. He is our other drummer. You know you'll see two drummers up here from time to time, and we praise God for him. Brother Bobby is a, uh, a native of Dayton. He said he's the third of five siblings born to a remarkable, loving, and caring couple, Dr. Roger and Maceola Taylor. Yes. Amen. He was a member of Trinity Presbyterian Church from the womb <laughs> until his recent transfer of membership to College Hill Community Church. He went to Colonel White High School. Anybody from Colonel White? All right, all right, we're not going to hold it against you. <laughs> uh, he went to Colonel White High School and eventually to Howard University, where he studied African-American music and percussion, earning a bachelor's degree. Somebody say hallelujah. And then life happens. He's divorced, has no children, yet keep hope alive that I will meet a woman of God to share our lives together. Music... <laughs> He said, music has always been my passion. I also enjoy cooking, baking, reading, and humor, though some may question the latter. I strive today and always to remember and demonstrate God as my first love. Lastly, I'm excited to see what is in store for the future as I embark a new man due to God's mercy and unmerited love. My desire is to yield to his will and see what he reveals, trusting in Jesus, my Lord and Savior. Welcome, Brother Bobby Taylor to official membership. And see, never take for granted the people that are here, you know, where, where they choose to actually commit. You know, you can be a lot of places and not be committed. So we welcome now 
Sister Dominique Noel Worthen. Amen? Amen. <laughs> Dominique is a not native of Dayton, growing up in Springboro, Ohio. She is the oldest of three daughters born to Pastor M. Merritt Worthen and Reginald Worthen. She has been with the wonderful Cameron Turner, who's up in the balcony, going on six years, and loves worshiping with her best friends, Sister Q and Brother Al Dargan. She, she too, was a member of Trinity Presbyterian Church, Church from a very young age until her mom became the pastor at McKinley United Methodist, then New Vision United Methodist, and she started attending College Hill in July of 2020 when Pastor Worthen became interim pastor. She went to Stivers, for the, Stivers School for the Arts and has been attending Sinclair Community College. Music and writing have always been her passions. She always enjoys dancing, sports, and movies. She has always served in her church in leadership roles, whether as choir director or a youth leader. She loves kids, she really does. She used, to, she used to work at a daycare and they loved her. And she enjoys helping people as much as she can. Dominique is excited to see what God has planned for her and she, as she embarks on this journey with him, praise be to God for new chapters. Welcome Sister Dominique Noel Worthen. Amen, amen. We have uh, five or six uh, people yet to take through November's class. If you're watching right now and you haven't signed up, we're gonna offer another Saturday class in April. So please reach out to the office. If you know of someone in need of baptism looking to join, send them to me and we'll get them taken care of. Praise God that even in a pandemic, people are coming out and joining. Fruit is, is bare. And, 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 and even with snow is coming down, fruit <laughs> is still coming. Amen. And I have an exciting thing to announce and tell you. Um, I don't think they said this in the announcements. An exciting thing to announce. Um, because it's Women's History Month, you all know I've been lifting up uh, women, you know, trying to be local women um, this time, um, and also recognizing national women. But I thought, what better thing, rather than to talk about somebody, but to invite somebody. You all praise the Lord that Reverend Dr. Vanessa Oliver Ward will be our guest speaker for Women's History Month on next Sunday. Tell somebody next Sunday. You all come in here and pack the house. I know, look, they, they're not even requiring masks anymore, but we still do and we do it safely. So tell your friends, come on out and hear because I know that, they, that uh, the Lord has given an incredible message for Reverend Dr. Vanessa Oliver Wer, Wer, Ward of Omega Baptist Church. So let's praise God in advance for what she's about to do. Amen. And the last thing, I've, um, we don't have it in writing, so put this on your cards. We're not gonna collect your cards. And that's, by the way, since they're not collected, you can be honest about how you're feeling and the sort of stuff you brought in here, amen? So on your cards, you might want to write down that the last Sunday of the month should be March 27th. Following worship is our congregational meeting. Um, two Sundays from now, March 27th, Sunday following service is our congregational meeting. It will be a hybrid meeting for the first time. We're inviting every, as many as possible inside. But for those who are still not coming inside, we will also offer it over Zoom. And so we're going to try this new technology to be able to hear and count votes and, and talk to people over Zoom. So we welcome you for um, an important this is very important. This is not just the usual meeting. Um, our vision and strategic plan will be rolled out at that time, along with lots of other exciting information. All right, and with that, I think we've dispensed with all of the things that you need to know. So let's now hear a word from the Lord. Coming from the Old Testament, Psalm 27, verses 1 through 6. Hear what God says. Hear what people say to their God. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evildoers assail me to devour my flesh, my adversaries and foes, they shall stumble and fall. Somebody should have shouted right there. 
Yeah, because you know you've had some haters. You've had people coming against you. You need to know that there's somebody fighting right there with you, ahead of you, behind you, that's bigger than anything that comes against you. Though an army encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war rise up against me, yet I will be confident. One thing I asked of the Lord that I will seek after, to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For he will hide me in his shelter in the day of trouble. He will conceal me under the cover of his tent. He will set me high on a rock. Now my head is lifted up above my enemies all around me, and I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing and make melody to the Lord. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Our opening prayer. Almighty God, we thank you for another moment to be in your presence. We come to you this morning with so many concerns and issues that demand our attention. <clears throat> our lives are burdened, our spirits are tired. Guide our lives and our steps as we walk this Lenten journey, inward and outward. Help us to discern what you would have us to do, that others may be healed. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Okay, I hate doing commercials in the middle of things, but I haven't heard our liturgist very well since Sister Gay was, was talking. I don't know if it's really soft voices, but I want to test this mic over here after service so we can just find out what's going on. Because is it just me? I mean, or, or do I just have a big mouth? Because <laughs> I'm just not hearing it from over there the way I would like to. So I want to be sure that we test that after service. All right, so with that... I just want to uh, invite you all to praise the Lord with us. Has, has, has anybody been blessed by the Lord? Does anybody have something to thank God for? So our singers aren't here to entertain you. This is not, you didn't pay for a concert. This is praise and worship. So when we say praise and worship, we mean clap your hands, stomp your feet, stand up, shout. Whatever it is, when, a, when the Holy Spirit hits, don't, don't quench the spirit, but take this time to praise the Lord. Won't you praise the Lord with us?
mighty God we serve. Woo. With that, we come to the time in the service when we offer back to God just some of what he has blessed us with. Somebody praise God for an opportunity to give. Oh, come on now. Somebody praise God for an opportunity to give because don't you know you can't beat God giving? The more you give, the more he gives to you. You ought to praise God for an opportunity to give, an opportunity to serve. Faithful God, you have kept your promises to us. Our lives give witness to your abundant blessings. May we faithfully keep our promises to you. Strengthen our commitment to live as true disciples of Jesus Christ. Your love sustains us, guides us, and empowers us. Lord, take these gifts that we are about to give as our promise to give ourselves completely into your care, to live without fear, to trust your love without reservation, and trusting in your word that you will supply all of our needs according to your glory in Christ Jesus. Let the church say amen. amen. As we prepare to give, there's various ways that we can do it. We invite you to give as you are able because God loves a cheerful giver. Don't give because people ask. Give because you want to be used by God. And with that, having said that, as the ushers will begin to come around shortly, you can give here at the service, um, you, or you can send a, a check after the service to um, College Hill Church, 1547 Philadelphia Drive, Dayton, Ohio, 45406. Or you can now give electronically on our Faith Life app. Three different ways you can do it on Faith Life. Go to faithlife.com and search College Hill Community Church. Or text the word GIVE and the amount to 937-230-6530. Or download the app and search for College Hill and verify the address of 1547 Philadelphia Drive as there is, believe it or not, more than one College Hill church. So I guess it would, it would go to God either way, but we want your gift to get to where you're trying to get it to. Regardless of how you give, we thank you for your faithfulness and support of this church and in thanksgiving to God. And as we give, we invite you to praise the Lord with us. Amen. 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 Please follow the directions of the ushers and let's praise the Lord as we give. Most gracious and loving God, Lord, we thank you. We praise you right now. We extol you. We lift you up. Lord, we're so grateful. We're so grateful to be here this morning. We're so grateful that you woke us up. Lord, we thank you for giving us safe passage to our destinations, Lord, for being with us throughout the week. Whatever came our way, Lord, you were there. So, Lord, we come in praise and joy and thanksgiving to you, Lord. And as we give, it's just a, a small part. It's just, just a little bit to show how grateful that we are. And, and, and that we're, we're also appreciative to be involved in your kingdom building. Lord, we pray that whatever we give, Lord, that it's enough. And whatever, if it's not enough, Lord, stretch it out like you did the, the bread and the fish. That everybody who needs it might receive it. And Lord, bless the givers and those who wanted to give, Lord. 
Help us in our walk, in our faithfulness with you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. And let the saints say, amen. Amen. With that, we want to move on to today's Women's History presentation. Anybody have any idea of a woman that they, they think needed to be lifted up? Let's see if anybody guessed it. Any women to lift up? Your mom? <laughs> Amen. Brother James will say the same thing. His mom, too. My mom, then. <laughs> How about everybody's mom? Yes. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Also, I want to lift up those incredible uh, women basketball players that have been uh, playing, I mean, playing their hearts out over at UD Arena for the championships. Amen. Look, we can't just support the men. We have to support the women. Those young ladies have been playing some ball. Amen. So I want to lift them up. Anybody else who got a guess on who our, our women's history presentation is about today? There's so many. <laughs> does it involve basketball? It does not involve basketball. <laughs> At least not really. All right, well, maybe you'll recognize her when you see her. Announcement from, announcement from the White House. February 25th of 2022. Since justice, <laughs> amen, amen. Since Justice Stephen Breyer announced his retirement, President Biden has conducted a rigorous process to identify his replacement. President Biden sought a candidate with exceptional credentials, unimpeachable character, and unwavering dedication to the rule of law. And the president sought an individual who is committed to equal justice under the law and who understands the profound impact that the Supreme Court's decisions have on the lives of American people. That is why President Joseph Biden nominated Judge Ketanji Brown Jackson to become the 116th Associate Justice of the United States Supreme Court, making her the first black woman nominated for this high court. Amen, amen, amen. Judge Jackson is one of our nation's brightest legal minds and has an unusual breadth of experience in our legal system, giving her the perspective to be an exceptional justice. Judge Jackson, Judge Jackson stood out as a high achiever throughout her childhood. Listen to this, young folk. When you want to do something, it starts, it gets planted in you early. Don't let somebody stamp it out. She was a speech and debate star who was elected mayor of Palmetto Junior High School and student, student body president of Miami Palmetto Senior High School. But like many black women, Judge Jackson still faced naysayers. When Judge Jackson told her high school guidance counselor she wanted to attend Harvard, the guidance counselor warned that Judge Jackson should not set her sights so high. That did not stop her. She graduated magna cum laude from Harvard University and then attended Harvard Law School where she graduated cum laude and was an editor of the Harvard Law Review. From the New York Times, March 2nd, 20, 2022, writer Aaron Schaff wrote, the nomination of the first black woman to serve on the Supreme Court is a long overdue moment of historic consequence. Another glass ceiling has been shattered and at the most powerful judicial institution in our country. In its 232-year history, only seven, out of, out of the 232-year history, only seven of the 115 justices who have served have not been white men. When she is confirmed, Judge Katanji Brown Jackson will be the eighth. For black women in particular, the powerful symbolism of her nomination runs deep. We felt as if we watched, we felt it as we watched a spe spectacular, accomplished black woman with natural hair speak eloquently about her parents, both former public school teachers who attended historically back black colleges and universities, and about the strength of her faith and ambition that she needed to overcome the inadequate expectations of many around her. 
Judge Jackson comes with unsaleable traditional credentials that rival those of the Chief Justice with whom she will serve. But she also comes with unique perspectives and experiences. As a former public defender, as a member of the United States Sentencing Commission, as a Southerner, and as a black woman that have shaped her vision of the law in ways that are underrepresented, to put it mildly, on the current court. Predictably, Ju Judge Jackson's nomination to the court has not been met with universal praise. Even before she was announced as the nominee, the pledge by President Biden to appoint a black woman to the court was attacked by many on the right. The familiar weapons of the trade were unsheathed in an effort to discredit the legitimacy of the nominee, whoever she might be. Lamentations ranged from the supposed fear that the nominee would be a lesser qualified candidate and an affirmative action nominee to charges that the process had been politicized by President Biden's pledge were give, that they were given weeks of airtime. It was a disgrace. But that outrage and now the embarrassingly anemic effort to challenge the qualifications of Judge Jackson are important to understand for their own symbolism and significance. This was evident in early confirmation hearings when Judge Jackson was asked by Senator Tom Cotton of Arkansas have you ever represented a terrorist at Gu Guantanamo Bay? And she was asked about race in her decision making by Senator John Cornyn of Texas. What role does race play, Judge Jackson, in the kind of judge that you have been and the kind of judge that you will be? We have seen these tactics before. Every chink in the armor of racial and gender exclusion produces outside opposition precisely because of its potential to destabilize the existing norms and systems. Judge Jackson surely recognized this when she honored Judge Motley, Judge Motley in last week's news conference announcing her nomination when she stated that she shares Judge Motley's commitment to equal justice under the law. There will be inspiring moments, and there will be ugly and unwarranted attacks during Judge Jackson's confirmation hearing. But she will be confirmed, and something on the court and in our expectations of it will change. Somebody praise God for change. <laughs> Amen. As slow in coming as it sometimes seems that it is, and, 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 and as incremental that it is, that doesn't always feel, you don't always feel it, but you look back and see how much God has done and he has truly made a difference. While everything, while people have been fighting to make sure that things go one way, God has been making sure that they still stay on track. Amen, amen, and amen. And with that, I think we've got some special music that's planned that's going to bless you. And then... Um, we're going to uh, go on and treat this word for today. Amen? Amen. Amen.
Think of the Holy Spirit as the air. Something so necessary to your existence. You know what it feels like when you can't breathe, when you have trouble breathing? You ever try to hold your breath for so long after a while you just have to, you have to take in that breath? Amen, amen. That's what it's like being without God. It's like being without air. I mean, you can do it for a little bit, but after a while it gets more and more difficult. Holy Spirit just continues to fill us, fill us and be all that we need. Amen. I see you, Brother James. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. You all forgive me. I think I forgot to announce for the youth um, that this is second Sunday, so the youth are going now upstairs. So if there's anyone still left who has not gone, any youth that are wanting to go to uh, youth church, we invite you to go at this time. All right. Okay, so our assignment, the assignment that God has given me, you could follow, follow bro Brother Marcus if there's anybody else going up. Uh, the assignment that the Lord gave me here in Lent, um, this is a, a scripture that is probably well known to many. I might have even preached it here already, but... It was something that as we were going through Lent, it's one of the things that comes up often. And so he put it on my spirit and gave this scripture to me in a whole new way. But it's a lengthy one, and it comes from two completely different chapters of 1 Samuel. So because it's two, two different stories as part of one big story, Brother Larry Holler is going to um, invite us to hear 1 Samuel chapter 16, verses 14 through 23. And then I'll read 1 Samuel chapter 18, 5 through 16. We invite you to stand as you are able for 1 Samuel chapter 16, verses 14 through 23, and 1 Samuel 18, verses 5 through 16. And I will read the second part, and uh, hopefully you'll hear that, that switch in the scenes as we go forward. Brothers and sisters, I invite you to hear the word of the Lord that we receive from the Hebrew scriptures. In this uh, passage that I'm about to read, you will uh, experience an encounter of two of the most important leaders of Israel, Saul and David. And I think it's important to have a little context for the, why this is an important scripture based on what's happened just before this in 1 Samuel. So, Pastor, I'm going to indulge a little bit of history here just before the passage that I'm going to read we come across Saul who by the way was an anointed king of Israel he was a favorite of the Lord but he had fallen into a bit of disrepute he had been sinful and the Lord had uh, he had fallen out of favor with the Lord he was if you will on a downward trajectory of, of his leadership but David was different you remember that the great prophet Samuel had gone to David's father, Jesse, and had looked at all of the sons of Jesse, including David, and had decided that, in fact, it was David who was the one who would receive the anointing of God, the one who would receive this new spirit of God. So you see David on an upward trajectory, and you see Saul very troubled and discontented. And that's the context for this encounter of these two men. Listen, starting at verse 14. Now the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord tormented him. And Saul's servants said to him, 
See now, an evil spirit from God is tormenting you. Let our Lord now command the servants who attend you to look for someone who is skilled in playing the lyre. That's a stringed instrument, the lyre. And when the evil spirit from God is upon you, he will play it, and you will feel better. So Saul said to his servants, Provide for me someone who can play well, and bring him to me. One of the young men answered, I have seen a son of Jesse the Bethlehemite, who is skillful in playing, a man of valor, a warrior, prudent in speech, and a man of good presence. And the Lord is with him. So Saul sent messengers to Jesse and said, Send me your son David, who is with the sheep. Jesse took a donkey loaded with bread, a skin of wine, and a kid, and sent them by his son David to Saul. And David came to Saul and entered his service. Saul loved him greatly and he became his armor bearer. Saul sent to Jesse saying, let David remain in my service for he has found favor in my sight. And whenever the evil spirit from God came upon Saul, David took the lyre and played it with his hand and Saul would be relieved and feel better and the evil spirit would depart from him. God's word to us today from the 16th chapter of 1 Samuel. Thanks be to God. 1 Samuel 18, 5 through 16, and I'm reading from the ERV. David went to fight wherever Saul sent him. He was very successful, so Saul put him in charge of the soldiers. This pleased everyone, even Saul's officers. David would go out to fight against the Philistines. On the way home after the battles, the women in every town in Israel would come out to meet him. They sang and danced for joy as they played their tamarines and lyres, and they did this right in front of Saul. The women sang, Saul has killed his thousands, but David has killed tens of thousands. This song upset Saul, and he became very angry. Saul thought the women give David credit for killing tens of thousands of the enemy. They will give him the kingdom itself. So from that time on, Saul watched David very closely. The next day, an evil spirit from God took control of Saul, and he went wild in his house. David, in this version, they call it the harp. David played the harp to calm him as he usually did. But Saul had a spear in his hand, and he thought, I'll pin David to the wall. Saul threw the spear twice, but David jumped out of the way both times. The Lord had left Saul and was now with David, so Saul was afraid of David. Saul sent David away and made him a commander over a thousand soldiers. This put David out among the men even more as they went into battle and returned. The Lord was with David. So he was successful in everything. Saul saw how successful David was and became even more afraid of him. But all of the people in Israel and Judah loved David because he was out among them and led them into battle. This is the word of God for the people of God. The people say, thanks be to God. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. And my prayer is that the meditations of my heart the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, thy rock, my rock and my redeemer. As I introduce, oh, let me get a little more comfortable. <laughs> How's that? All right, all right. So as I begin to introduce today's sermon, I want to open by giving two hopefully familiar colloquialisms. You may not know them or use them, but hopefully you've heard them over the years. And I have to give credit to our younger generation, whatever age you consider younger, right? 
as I'm not sure who actually introduced these two phrases and when, as it's been quite a while ago since they first came into use. However, these two particular phrases have stayed with me over the years because I think that they are really on point. Now, the first saying is, I'm feeling a certain type of way, or I'm feeling a certain kind of way. Has anybody heard somebody say that? Anybody? All right, all right, okay, good, good. Well, whether you have or not, I, I like this statement because it allows a person to announce that they are having strong emotions, but they don't necessarily have to define them, justify them in any way. It just is what it is. Somebody does something or says something to you and it affects you. Or you can just wake up in a mood and announce that I'm feeling a certain type of way. And then the person hearing this should automatically know to tread lightly. That you're feeling sensitive or upset, off kilter or just a certain type of way. Get it? Now, the other statement that I appreciate, I have actually chosen as the title of this sermon. And it's also a reference to how King Saul reacts and feels about his situation of knowing that he has fallen out of favor with God. Thus, the title of today's sermon, All Up in My Feelings. I'm all up in my feelings. And in case you're not sure what that means, I, I went to the Urban Dictionary to be sure that I defined it correctly. If you praise God for Google. So to be, to be all up in your feelings means to be extremely emotional. Others may think that you're reacting emotionally for no reason or overreacting to a situation. I'm just all up in my feelings. I, I can't explain what it is. I, I can't tell you why I feel this way, but I, I'm feeling a certain type of way. I'm all up in my feelings. And for those of you who are visual learners, I've got a clip for you that can show you better than I can tell you. Now the clip is from a series called New Girl. Has anybody watched that, New Girl? All right, I knew some people had seen it. Now I've not seen this, this show that this clip comes from, so I can't give you much of a background for context. However, it's not needed to prove my point. What I can tell you is that the woman in the clip, the one in the red suit, right? She's there for a job interview. And just watch as you see her go from professional to all up in her feelings. Jessica Day? So why do you want to teach adults? I think it's really inspiring that these people have chosen to go back to school, you know, that they want to read To Kill a Mockingbird, that they oh, want. Oh, I named my dog Boo after. Uh, after Boo Radley? Exactly. That's amazing. Yeah. Oh my God. Boo's a puppy. She's so cute. Oh, I know. Such a cutie. This cup is so tiny. she fit in the cup I just don't understand just physically how did she get so small <laughs> I'm sorry um I'm sorry I got this <laughs> I don't know what's wrong so weird never happens to me she's really cute yes she was did she die it's fine it's been two years <laughs>
So, so you get that she's all up in her feelings. Now, I don't know what had the lady so upset. And again, I don't need to know to understand that her feelings had gotten the best of her. Clearly, something was going on in her head, and more importantly, her heart, that prevented her from acting rationally. Because I would submit to you that most interviews don't involve crying, at least not usually. <laughs> and most interviews don't make the interviewer uncomfortable as she clearly was. The interviewer had no idea why this woman had come into her office and just began to snot and cry right in front of her. But had the interviewee announced at the beginning of the interview that she was feeling a certain type of way or that she was all up in her feelings, then at least the interviewer would have realized that this wasn't going to be an ordinary interview. Thus, she probably would know that she would have at least known that the interviewee was not up to putting her best foot forward and maybe they should reschedule for another day. Now, why you ask is this important and how is it related to our faith? Well, I would assert that we as people, as human beings, being in the flesh, and prone to, to actions and reactions that are driven by feelings that sometimes, and not always the saved and sanctified saints, right, but, but sometimes some of us, we can be guilty of letting our feelings get the better of us. You know, we can let our emotions take precedent over logic, knowledge, and even faith. Because when our emotions get involved, sometimes we don't care about anything else but how we feel, whether it's rational or not. I guess nobody can say amen. amen. Let me give you some examples. When we're mad, we don't necessarily care if we hurt someone that we love. In fact, we might try to hurt them, thinking that'll make us feel better. You ever heard that song by Jasmine Sullivan? Says, I'll bust the windows out your car. She said it made her feel better. Okay, y'all aren't going to let me preach today. That's all right. I'm not saying do it. I'm just saying she was all up in her feelings, and that's what she chose to do. She might have regretted it later, but at the time, her emotions said, let me bust up this man's car who made me so mad. When we're angry, we don't always choose our words as carefully as we would otherwise. When I'm angry, and, and, and don't tell this to anybody, but, but, but there have been some words that came out of my mouth that I wasn't even sure that I knew until I got angry enough to say them. Didn't I tell you last week some of us are saved but our mouths aren't? That's still not a thing, but we'll swear that it is. Or when we're jealous, whether we have reason to be or not, we can justify how we treat other people. I will still never understand how folk get into fights when their spouse or significant other cheats on them. Now, I'm not necessarily surprised about the fight, not that I'm saying it, that it's okay, but if you do fight, why go after the woman or the man that your spouse or significant other cheated with? See, that person didn't have an obligation to you. I mean, it was morally wrong for them to do it. However, the one who owed you the faithfulness is your man or your woman. That's who you need to be upset with. But we get just unreasonable. We'll take our anger and our jealousy out on whoever comes along. Not to mention that, see, I, I'm not going to fight either one of them. Because if you don't want me, <laughs> you can trust and believe that I don't want you either. Now, I'm, I'm likely to get upset. I might even shed a cheer or two if you were really important to me. But the minute that you decide, the minute that you decide that you want to be with somebody else, then don't let the door hit you where the good Lord, well, you know what I mean. Pray for me, amen. <laughs> the point is, when we're hurt, we often want to hurt somebody back whether they are the ones that wronged us to start with. When our emotions get the best of us, reason goes out the door. Which takes us back to the passages in 1 Samuel. 
Now, what we didn't read was that in chapter 15 of this story, and Brother Larry talked about it a little bit, the prophet Samuel had told King Saul that the Lord was angry with him for disobeying him. Therefore, the Lord now refused to accept Saul as king any longer. In fact, Samuel told Saul that the Lord had given the kingdom to one of his friends, a man, he said, who is better than you. Yet he didn't name the person. He did not know that it was David. But as a result, the word says the spirit of the Lord left Saul, which basically means that Saul lost his favor and right relationship with God. He no longer felt in touch with God. He lost his confidence, his joy, and his peace. And he lost these things, and they were replaced with worry, stress, anger, and even paranoia. Saints, you need to know that if you want to keep positive emotions in your heart and in your spirit regularly, then you need to keep a strong relationship with God. Because if you don't, come on now, all kinds of negative thoughts and, and emotions will creep in. That's what happened to Saul. Somebody can say that's what happened to me. They just don't want to say it out loud. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Say it out loud. <laughs> For the word says that because God was angry with Saul, an evil spirit would come over him and caused him much trouble. Saul ceased to be his usual happy self. He lost his confidence. His ego was deflated. He felt like the world was against him. And because of how he felt, he began to make himself miserable. Can anybody relate? You feeling bad? You know, things not going the way that you want to. Next thing you know, you just miserable, just, just unpleasant, just hard to be around. Because he was so miserable, he began making other people miserable. Did you know that hurt people hurt people? Sometimes it's not personal. It's just that it's almost impossible for someone who is unhappy to tolerate someone who is happy. They don't want to be around all that because they're all up in their feelings saying, why are you smiling so much? Why are you always laughing? Why are you so happy? Don't you know that gas prices are high? Don't you know we're in a pandemic? You need to take life more seriously. As if we can't praise God or have joy and peace despite our circumstances. Well, Saul, he was busy being mad like that. So one of his servants said, an evil spirit from God is bothering you, O king. Give us the command and we will look for someone who can play the harp. If the evil spirit from God comes on you, this person will play music for you. Then you will feel better. Now let's pause right there. I, I, I do have to admit, I have trouble with the statement that the evil spirit came from God. Anybody else have trouble with that? I, did, I, when I said, that just doesn't sound right. This doesn't, this doesn't sound like the God that I know. So I, I went to a commentary to help me on this. And the New Interpreter's Bible said this. The writer of this book provides only a theological explanation that the Lord had withdrawn his spirit and therefore must have sent an evil spirit in its place. And back then, all abnormal psychological conditions were believed to be due to the influence of the spirit, which I don't necessarily disagree with. I believe spirits do have an impact on our minds and our thoughts and our emotions. But then it says that the writer of this book cannot conceive the existence of any spirit which is not subject to the will of the Lord, even an evil spirit. See, that makes more sense. I would agree that every spirit is subject to the will of God. That doesn't necessarily mean that the Lord sent the spirit, but that the Lord did allow it. Since the Lord was angry with Saul, he no longer protected him or even engaged with him. And any time we are out of the presence and will of God, we are subject to anything and everything coming our way. Brothers and sisters, one of the best ways to guard your thoughts and your emotions is to stay in the presence and the will of God. Because you're not always going to be able to handle 
uh, or successfully overcome the pressures and challenges that come up against you unless you have the Lord. But back to the story. Because Saul was acting so erratic, the servant got permission to call David and have him play his harp for the king. And the word says, anytime the evil spirit from God came on Saul, David would take his harp and he would play it. The evil spirit would leave Saul and he would begin to feel better. Tell me music is not a gift from God. And David was the one that provided it. He was the one that blessed Saul. Now, in the meantime, Goliath and the Philistines had come up against Saul and the army of Israel. And as we know, this same young David steps in and he conquers the giant with one swift blow of a stone from his slingshot. And that really gets Saul's attention. And after proving himself like that, King Saul lets David fight regularly. And David is successful no matter who he fights. Understandably, with all of this, the nation goes wild. The soldiers, they look up to David. Saul's son, Jonathan, becomes his best friend. And then the women are the final straw. Because you know how we like to impress the opposite sex, right? Everything we do, we want to see if they, are they watching us? Do I look cute while they see it? It's okay. So, 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 so Saul... <laughs> Saul, you know, he wants his king. He's expect everybody to look up to him. But instead of the women idolizing the king, the word says, women in every town in Israel would come out to meet David. And they sang and they danced for joy as they played their tambourines and lyres. And they did this right in front of Saul. Now, they know they were wrong, but people will turn on you in a heartbeat. Just because they thought you were impressive yesterday, just wait. Somebody will come along tomorrow that they'll be impressed even more with them. This is a song that the women sung. They said, Saul has killed his thousands, but David, he has killed his tens of thousands. Now, I don't know what the tune was, but they obviously made it work. Now, was it true? Yes. But did they have to say it out loud? Did they have to really taunt their king like that? Because I'm telling you, when your ego is bruised, when you're already feeling low, when somebody does or says something, even in fun, it can drive you crazy. You know, stuff that you found funny when you were in a good mood isn't so funny when you're feeling down and you're upset. That's what happened to Saul. He was so jealous and insecure that he started seeing red. He was ready to kill somebody, and he knew just who to take his irrational anger out on, David. Not David, his enemy, but David, his friend and his servant. The same David that played the harp for him to make him feel better. David that had killed Goliath and saved the whole nation of Israel. David, his son's very best friend. All because Saul was all up in his feelings. And out of that anger, he ultimately tried to kill David. Verse 1810 says, The next day an evil spirit from God rushed upon Saul and he raved within the house. While David was playing the lyre as he did day by day, Saul had his spear in his hand and Saul threw the spear for he thought, I will pin David to the wall. But David eluded him twice because that's what you need to know about your enemies. When God has already chosen you, it doesn't matter. They can do whatever they want to, but God is not going to allow something to get up on you. And in the words of the musical prophet Slick Rick in Children's Story, I end that story saying, this ain't funny, so don't you dare laugh. Just another case about the wrong path. Straight and narrow or your soul gets cast. You know I gotta throw a song in there, right? But as the rapper says, this isn't a fun story. But we know it's not all that uncommon. People arguing, fighting, even coming to blows because they're up in their feelings. And when you're at your maddest or most hurt or scared, whatever you do at the time feels justified. Come on, Russia. 
When we're in our feelings, we do whatever sounds and feels good to us, and it seems like it's okay. But here's the thing about letting your emotions rule you. You'll want to pay attention. Here, if you got space left on your cards, you're going to want to write some of this down. I'm going to tell you two things and we're done. Number one, <clears throat> emotions are not facts. Emotions are not facts. F-A-C-T-S, right? They're not. They are simply how you feel, and they may or may not be based in reality. For example, have you ever been mad at someone but couldn't say exactly what they did? You, you just look at them and you get mad. They're just annoying to you and you can't even say why. One day you, you're pleased with how your husband eats and the next time you're like, why does he suck on the soup like that? <laughs> Something that was okay yesterday all of a sudden makes you mad today. Or have you ever disliked someone who didn't do anything to you? They just looked conceited. They thought they were all that. They haven't even said anything to you yet, and you've already judged them. Probably because you wanted them, and then you said, well, <laughs> she never talked to me, or he never talked to me, so i got to say something bad about him. Or you know how, you know, what women can be. We don't like anybody walking in the room that's looking better than we are. Let's see, I'm stepping on toes. Okay, I'll get back to the, to the scripture. Okay, so here's another example. Have you ever fell head over heels over someone that you're not in a relationship with. I mean, just, I, I, that, that's, that, that person's for me. I, I, I want them. I, I can say I did three times over Denzel Washington, Will Smith, and Idris Elba. <laughs> don't act like you don't know what I'm talking about. All of y'all got some secret boyfriends. Come on. Or you get infuriated with somebody who wasn't even thinking about you. You're pining away over them, and they've got you in the friend zone. Then you got the nerve to get mad at them like it's their fault that you're upset that they don't want you. Feelings are not always based in reality. But sometimes, because we feel some type of way, we'll create a reality that justifies how we feel. And it happens in other ways. While you're trying to fast, see, I'm coming down your lane now. While you're trying to fast, you're going to get all types of feelings. You're going to feel like you're deprived, even though you're not going hungry. I mean, you just can't eat everything that you want. You just gave up some stuff, not all food, right? Just because you can't have fried foods doesn't mean that there's not plenty of other stuff you can eat. You just don't want that. So you feel like you need those french fries, that cake, that beer and wine that you gave up. But it's just a feeling. You really are not going hungry. If you decide to work out, a lot of times you're not going to feel like getting off of the couch. You're not going to feel like doing 50 sit-ups. You're not going to feel like making yourself sweat. It doesn't mean that it's a bad thing. You're just not going to feel like doing it at first. If you feel scared or nervous about something, even something that is good for you, you won't feel like doing it. It will feel like, it, it will feel like it's, it, it's a bad idea. Fear is the most paralyzing yet often unreasonable feeling that stops us from doing what's best for us. Fear of what's going to happen. What if this happens? What if that happens? They're going to laugh at me. I'm going to fail. This is going to happen. I know it's a... All of it is fear and has no, usually no basis in reality, but we pay attention to it as if it's real. Or if you're depressed, you may not feel like going to church. You may not feel like praying. Even though God has been good to you, better than you've been to yourself, you may not always feel like being grateful. You may not feel like you have a reason to praise the Lord, but God is good all the time, and all the time, God is good, whether you feel like it or not. So I'm here to tell you, sometimes you need to get up, get up out of your feelings, and that's the last point. You do have some control over how you feel. Somebody, I just can't help it. I can't help it that I feel like this. Yes, you can. 
you do have some control over how you feel. You don't think so. Whatever you feed is going to be how you feel. Whatever you concentrate on or tell yourself or are being told is going to drive your emotions. Anybody know who Morris Day is? Mm -hmm, yeah, so, so he had a line in a song. He used to <laughs> that's what I'm talking about, doing the bird. I see you, Brother Sherman. <laughs> brother, brother Morris would say, I'm going to make you love me. And you know what? That's possible. You can, you can choose somebody and say, I'm going to make them love me and do ev now, now, if, <laughs> there's some things to this, right? If you do everything that really just makes them happy and appreciate you, you work hard to get them, chances are they're going to get quite fond of you. you and, and it's the same way that you can make somebody hate you. You can do all of the things that's just going to make somebody matter and matter and matter. You have control over feelings, and people can control your feelings and emotions. If you think that you're sick, often you'll Google it, right? Find out all these kind of crazy things that you could have, and then you'll stress yourself out, afraid that you're about to die of some rare disease, whether it's true or not. Or if the doctor tells you for real that you're sick, you can start having your own pity party and believe whatever they pronounce over you. Or you can be like King Hezekiah and turn and talk to God about it and see if he won't get you through. He got, what, another 15 years, another 10 or 15 years just, just praising and begging God. <laughs> Studies have shown that people who replace fear with faith and positive thinking, they recover much faster and easier than those who give in to fear and pessimism. People who believe they're not good enough, not worthy enough, not smart enough, not whatever enough, often won't be enough because they give in to those feelings of inadequacy. But the same person who once believed all of those feelings can hear the word of God and say, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I'm the head and not the tail. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me and actually begin to do them. So here's the final lesson. If you're going to be all up in your feelings, make sure that they are positive ones. Make sure that they are feelings that support who you are and whose you are. And as soon as something else starts coming on you, find something to change how you're feeling. That's what Saul did by listening to David play the harp. The problem was it was just a temporary fix. But I tell you something that won't run out, and that's faith. Faith in the one who never fails. Faith in the God who never slumbers nor sleeps. Faith that will carry you to the mountaintops and walk with you through the dark valleys. Faith that turns dark nights into day and sleepless nights into peaceful ones. Faith that never gives up and dares you to be disappointed. If you're going to be all up in your feelings, then let them be in a foundation of faith. Amen, amen, and amen. So with that, I just want to bring us to one last thing. And hopefully, if I did my assignment right, this is going to work. I want you to look back at those, in, at those index cards. For those of you at home on your paper, you wrote down some things that you were feeling a certain type of way about or things you might be worried about when you came in or however you were feeling. So the question is, after, you, after we sang and after we prayed and after we've been preached and after the Spirit of God came into this place, do the things that you wrote down seem as big as they were before or does your God seem bigger than anything to come across? Did you come in here thinking, oh, well, I'm tired, I don't know how I feel. Are you going to leave out of here praising and thanking God for the things that he has done? Praising God will move away some of those feelings that don't make sense. The enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He doesn't have a lot of power, but he does get to us through our thoughts and our feelings. Thoughts and feelings are two different things. I'm going to go to thoughts another day. But feelings, getting caught up in our feelings and convincing us, especially in this pandemic, Convincing us as war is happening in another country. Convincing us as we see all kinds of division in the nation. Convincing us that somehow God is not in control. 
You can give in to those feelings or you can remind yourself that you serve a God who is over all things, a God who could never lie and never fail, a God who loves you as his child, each and every one of you. He knew that he formed you before he formed you in the womb. He knew you and he created you for such a time as this. You are built to make it through whatever the world puts against you. He didn't make any mistakes. God doesn't mess up. So whatever you have is enough. And knowing that, you ought to be able to be happy and skip along each and every day, regardless of what your circumstances are, because you know you serve a God who is in control, and he knows the plans that he has for you, never to harm you, but to give you hope and a future. And if that's not something to be up in your feelings happy about, I don't know what is. Don't let anybody convince you that you don't have a reason to praise God. The doors of the church are open. The doors to the kingdom are open. There might be somebody who's been battling feelings, been caught up in some stuff, worried about it. And I'm not going to say some of the things that you're worried about are not true. What I'm saying is the feelings that you're having about it, your perspective about what you're going on, what's going on in your life, is it what's God telling you or is it what the world or the enemy is telling you? Because if you listen to God, there's never going to be a reason to complain. There will always be a reason to celebrate. It doesn't deny the facts, but you can be happy in the midst of all kinds of things. How do I know? Because I saw some disciples, or at least I heard about some disciples running around on a boat, scared about a storm while Jesus was sleeping. The things that you worry about don't worry God. And if he's not worried, why should you be? The doors of the church are open. The doors of the kingdom are, are open. If you're looking for a church home, we offer Christ. Your need of baptism, don't let too many more days go by. We want to go ahead and get you taken care of. But most of all, in this invitation, I invite you to do two things. More importantly, the Lord asks you to do two things, one of two things. Either get up out of your feelings and get into your faith, or if you live by feelings, then make sure that the feelings are ones that are driven by faith in God and give you every reason to celebrate and praise him each and every day. If you're in need of prayer, we'll pray with you. The doors of the church are open. The doors of the kingdom are open. <laughs> Sometimes you need to know. Doesn't matter what it is. Lost your job, lost your house, dealing with grief, illness, pain, no weapon will prosper. doesn't say it won't come, it says it won't prosper. When the word says this shall come to pass, it doesn't come to stay, it comes to pass. Trouble don't last always, all you got to do is hold on to the hand of the Lord. If you believe it, just raise your hand. See this? See, see, we can praise God right now. Nothing has to have changed at all. And you can have joy. You can have peace. You can have confidence. You don't have to have any stress. All you do is hold on to that unchanging hand. Amen. God, we thank you and praise you right now. 
Lord, we thank you. If we, we just need to remind ourselves sometimes of what you've already done. When I think of when I think about all that you brought me through, and I don't know everybody's testimony, everybody's situation, but I know if they're sitting here, if they're standing here, it is but by the grace of God. So, Lord, we thank you for what the, what you've already done, for keeping us from hurt, harm, and danger. That the things that came against us didn't destroy us because we are yet still here. Lord, we thank you for the gift of your son that not only gave us eternal life, but came to bring us abundant life. Lord, let us hold on to that right now. Lord, we thank you for being in your presence, for being in the presence of people that want to praise the Lord with us, that encourage us, Lord, that, are, that, that, that help us along the way to let us know we're not here by ourselves. Lord, we thank you for what you're doing right now. And then, Lord, for those that are willing to do it, we're going to give you a, 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 an advanced praise. We're going to praise you for what you're about to do. We're going to praise you for the breakthroughs that are about to happen. We're going to praise you for the things that are, that are yet not seen. Lord, we're going to praise you right now. If anybody believes that God is about to deliver them, deliver people around you, somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on now, somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Praise God. I thank you before you've done it. I thank, thank you because it's already done. You've already pronounced it. I might not see it yet, but I thank you, Lord, thank that you've already set it in motion. Lord, we thank you and praise you for being God all by yourself. May your joy, unspeakable joy, lift us up on those dark days, Lord. Let, let our, our sense of humor take over when people want to get us upset, Lord. Let Put a smile on our face when people want us to be sad, Lord. When dark days and loneliness come around, Lord, remind us of who we are and whose we are, that we can celebrate and choose you and praise you all up in our feelings. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the church say amen, amen, and amen. With that, we just want to lift up the prayers of the saints. We've already collected some. There are some on the uh, screen. Um, we want to lift up in memory of my sister Galen, who would have been 77 today, Sister Jan Breck. She was a great sister. Amen. Lifting her up. Praising God that she's with your mother. Amen. That when we, when we, we are never by ourselves, to be absent from our body is to be pleasant, present with the Lord, or we're here with the people who love us. We just praise God we're never by ourselves. He said he would never leave or forsake us. My prayer is that the spirit of all members are on one accord. Amen. For the March 27th meeting. Hallelujah. Let me read this one again. My prayer is that the spirit of all members are on one accord at our March 27th meeting. Look at God. The prayers of the righteous, the fervent and effectual prayers of the righteous availeth much, and we're trusting God in that as he continues to reveal his plans for us. Praying for my mom, Angela Martinez Torres, if you can pray because she has a lot of pain from Maria, lifting her up. Amen. Amen. Prayers for the Miller, for the passing of their, for the Millers, for the passing of their daughter, Linda, Prayers for Angie Pinnell for the loss of her daughter to cancer. Amen. Lifting them up. Prayers for Mrs. Dorothy Rowe, mother of Debbie McCargo and Patrick Rowe, that is in Kettering Hospital recovering from a slight stroke. I want to thank God for teaching and supporting me through my health challenges. I won't complain. Amen. Amen. Facebook prayer requests. Oh, this is beautiful, getting them from uh, Facebook. Uh, can you please keep the Holder family in your prayers? They are not feeling well today from Lita Brantley. Amen. Got you out on Facebook. Lifting up prayers for, that's my aunt, Clotie Mitchell, all of the Worthen family, really the Merritt family as uh, the loss of a second brother in just this past month. Prayers of improved health of Earl Greenwood. Prayers for Melanie Bishop and her father who has dementia. Prayers of comfort for Geraldine Starks who is now in hospice. Prayers for Sister Melanie Monson hasn't been feeling well. Also, we celebrated um, Sister Kay Davis on last week. I want to lift up this, uh, this week 
the 13th um, Corinth Presbyterian Church is the church that we're all praying for. Remember, we're lift, lifting up all the churches within the presbytery. Prayers for those struggling with mental health. Prayers still for a new hospital. Prayers for a new hospital. Prayers for a new hospital. At Salem and Philadelphia, we are still fighting. Prayers for the war or against the war. Prayers for peace. Prayers for everyone to spread love, maintain an open heart and love in God's way. Prayers for our church members and leadership, our sister church in Cartagena. Justice, healing, and reconciliation in our nation and communities and God's peace, protection, and revitalization. Also lifting up, um, we thank God for keeping Sister Jan Brecht in his care. She's now COVID-free. We announced that last week. All of the people that we have on there for chronic illness. Um, I want to lift up specifically... Um, Oh, I don't see it. Is there another? Is there another slide? No. Okay. Um, maybe they, we didn't get those on in time. I want to lift up, or maybe I'm not seeing it. I want to lift up Bishop Richard Cox and Reverend Gloria Cox um, of Parenthood Ministries as they continue to. They are fasting with us. They have their service online at 8 o'clock, and then they tune in to, to College Hill at 1030, and they are uh, fasting with us and praying with us, so we praise God for them, praying for uh, Bishop's health as he's been dealing with some uh, problems with his arms and in his legs, so we just lift him up for healing in the name of Jesus. Sister Vicki Eason, who's continued to go through um, different uh, medicines and procedures to try to help her with her illness, and also I want to lift up She's not on there. Um, I received a call from Sister Diane Harris, and one of the neighbors, um, and I can't call her name, um, but I know this. She's about to, her mother's about to get married. Her mother is in her 80s, I believe. Supposed to get married um, in another, on next, next Sunday, perhaps, or next Saturday. And yeah, keep hope alive, amen? It ain't over until God says it's over. So prayers for them as they prepare for those nuptials. But then she also told me that um, her fiance just discovered that he had cancer. And his name is Gus, Augusta, they call him Gus. And so I told her that we would lift him up. So praying for his healing in the name of Jesus, that as the Lord has brought them together, that they're helpmates for one another, and that that cancer that doesn't spread and it is taken care of so that they can enjoy their time together, that their latter days be better than their former ones. And she said as soon as she gets that over with him, she wanted to come over to College Hill and praise the Lord. She wanted to be baptized. She wanted to have her daughter baptized. So we wanted to lift her up. Hopefully they're watching, and we're keeping them in prayer. Brother Larry Holler has the mic. Is there anybody who's been forgotten? Prayers that we need to lift up. We want to take this day and dedicate it to Ruth Braggs. We are praying for Ruth that her birthday that we're celebrating today will be one that she can never forget because we love her and we're wrapping our arms around her to just show that God is through us, giving us the strength to be able to show her love and love can heal you. So we hope that happens to Ruth. Thank amen, you. amen, amen. Prayers of healing for Sister Ruth and happy birthday. Happy birthday, happy birthday, Sister Ruth. Amen. Uh, you mentioned it, Pastor, but I want to mention my brother-in-law, Earl Greenwood, is my brother-in-law who lives in Georgia. And he had surgery this week. So uh, pray for him as he um, uh, recovers. He's going to go to a rehab. And my niece, Brittany, in um, Florida, also I asked for prayer for her. She had surgery this week. So just keep my family in prayer as we just... Um, Pray for their healing and, and recovery. Amen. But is little Noah, no, is it Nova still doing well? No, oh. Nova had a checkup last month, and she is doing well. She's running all over the place. She is just, God is good. God Amen. is so good. Amen. Amen. I also want to lift up uh, Reverend Michael Johnson. Um, he's former superintendent in the United Methodist Church, my brother in ministry. Uh, he fell and broke his shoulder and has been recovering in a rehab center. So I just want to pray for his health and for his wife, Carolyn Johnson. I'm so I come in and see her preach good. And I miss Irma, and I praise Irma, and she's going to heaven. Pray for Irma. Amen. Praise the Lord. 
Lifting up those mothers, amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Brother James. Thank you. Pastor, I'd like to uh, continue praying for my sister. Her hand is really bad. She don't even sleep good. And I seen y'all had Geraldine Starks up on the board. Today is her birthday. You know, she's 70 some. I don't know. But God, she's still hanging in there. And uh, Pastor, I also want to thank you for praying for me about that apartment. Because I got it. Won't he and do I can it? pay my deposit tomorrow. Ah, hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. See, that's what I said. You know, it seems a terrible weight when we're in it, but when God delivers us like that. Your sister's name is Sandra, is that right? Yes, yes, ma'am. We're ma continuing to lift Sister Sandra, Sandra for the pain that she's having, that the doctors discover it, what they can do, and let the Holy Spirit make the difference. And happy birthday, Sister Starks. Amen. All right. Amen. Thank you. Anyone else? Pastor, I have a, a personal prayer, and, and I think it's important because today we lifted up the, the value of music as a way to bring healing and hope. Two weeks from today, the Bach Society of Dayton at 4 o'clock in the afternoon on the 27th will be singing one of the great musical works of all time, Johann Sebastian Bach's Mass in B Minor at the Kettering Adventist Church. I had the privilege of being part of the Bach Society to, to, to sing that. That's the same day as our annual meeting. And I hope that we can understand, not that we'll need healing coming out of our annual meeting, but that <laughs> Bach's beautiful music will undergird the work that we do as a church, will help bring healing in time of war. If you'd like more information about this, I'll put some things in the announcements for next week, Pastor, for that. but. But please plan to come to that at 4 o'clock on the 27th. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you for that announcement, Brother Larry. Also, she was supposed to be here today, and I was going to recognize her even though her birthday was Thursday? Yes. March 10th was my mother's birthday. So I just want to say happy birthday, Mom. I know she's not live streaming, but uh, happy birthday to my mother, Wanda Merritt. And praise God for another year for her. We'll celebrate all of the March birthdays at the end of the month, but anybody that's today or tomorrow or yesterday, all right, okay, we'll get you towards the end of the month. Anyone else? I just have a praise report. Um, I, Sister Diane was here. She's probably with the youth right now, but um, when I was working on the Black History presentation and I went to her house to speak with her about um, the things that she wanted to share for our, for our presentation, um, she ended up sharing with me two of her stones from her stone faith ministry, and I just wanted to re read one and then let her know how much I appreciated it. I've been carrying it around like a prayer stone, and um, it says, my greatest weapon against fear and worry are prayer and praise, and it goes just with the sermon. I've been carrying it around. I'm just really appreciative of that, so I just wanted to thank her. Amen. Amen. And you can't see them all. I see where they've been put up. Your, your cards of what you're praying for and, and trusting God for are uh, up here along the back. And if there's anybody who did not get to fill out their cards of what they're praying and trusting God for during this time of fasting and Lent, we want to be sure that you fill out your card and we will hang it up because they were, they're, they're, they're laid here uh, uh, symbolically in the presence of the Lord. I mean, the Lord is everywhere, amen? But as we come and we join and we praise God, we are lifting up all of those prayers. We don't even have to know what they say, but we are trusting and praising God with you. We are touching and agreeing because Jesus would, said, where two or more are gathered in his name, there he would be also. So we know that in this place, you are adding um, the spirit and the prayers of the saints to the things that you're lifting up. All right, seeing no others, let us pray. We need thee, Lord, we need thee. Every hour we need thee. Bless us now, our Savior, for we come to thee. 
Most, grace, most gracious and loving God, we praise you. Before we ask you for anything, we have to thank you for everything. Lord, thank you for all that you've done and all that you are. Thank you for this, this life that we have, that one that we don't, we don't get a repeat performance, Lord. So we thank you for each and every day and opportunity, do-overs for grace that covers the things that we haven't always done right and for favor that you give us that we don't even deserve, for your mercy, your steadfastness, your faithfulness, Lord, and for your never ending love. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you that everything that you provide is enough, that, you, that we rely on you to supply our needs, that no one is in charge of our destiny but us and you. And Lord, you have the final say so. So Lord, help us always to defer to your will and walk in your way because the plans that you have for us are more than eyes have seen or ears have heard. We can't even imagine the things that you have in store for us. But Lord, sometimes we get caught up in the weeds. We get caught up in the challenges and the difficulties. So right now, Lord, we lift up the prayers of the saints. Lord, we lift up those that are dealing with illness, those that are still um, experiencing grief, those that might be lonely, that need comfort, Lord. We pray for those that need financial help, Lord, those that need new homes, new cars, Lord, that need to have their paycheck last to be able to pay for groceries and gas and all of the things that are needed, Lord. We pray that you provide, as you always said that you would do, Lord, use us despite ourselves. Use our gifts that we might help somebody along the way. Lord, we thank you for the testimonies, the people that can say, look at what God has done for new apartments, Lord, and for recovering from illness, Lord, for to be here another day, to be able to shout and thank God that whatever thought that it was going to knock us down or destroy us, we are yet here and we stand trusting and praising your holy name. Lord, we ask that as we prepare to leave from this place, place, never from your presence, Lord, let your Holy Spirit reside within us. Lord, if we're going to be up in our feelings, let it be joy. Let it be happiness. Well, let it be peace. Lord, we trust you and, and we want to enjoy every day because we don't get it back. So don't let us miss one moment of just having the joy and love and peace that comes from being your child. Go with us from place to place. Remind us that you're with us. No weapon formed against us will prosper. Anything that comes against us, there's nothing. Is God with us is bigger than the world against us. We'll continue to glorify you and praise you in all that we do. And if you believe the word of the Lord, say amen, amen, and hallelujah. Hallelujah. As we prepare to leave, we have a charge to give and you have a charge to keep. Amen. As the youth come back, we just praise God that they've had incredible time. Amen. Always good to see them. Amen. Go in the love of God, whose promises are never broken. Go in the power of the Holy Spirit, whose fire sustains and encourages us. Go now into the world as witnesses of God's love, light, and and power. Vayan en el amor de Dios, cuyas promesas nunca se rompen. Vayan en el poder, en el poder del Espíritu Santo, cuyo juego nos sostiene y anima. Salgamos ahora al mundo como testigos del amor, la luz y el poder de Dios. Amen. We invite you to stand for our benediction and closing hymn. Now, I don't know if you just got excited over there, Sister Josephine, but I heard you a lot better that time. I don't know if they turned you up. What happened? Was that better? Was that better than the beginning? You all hearing, hearing her a little bit better? I know I got a big mouth, but I want to be sure everybody's heard. Amen. Okay. <laughs> As you go from this place, remember feelings. They're just a part of being human, whether good or bad. How we feel drives what we think and how we react. If you're going to be up in your feelings, remind yourself of all of the things God has done and what he's still yet to do. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think, according to the power at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. In the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, let the church say amen.
turn you over to the 